And joining us now from South Bend, Indiana, political reporter for the Washington Post and MSNBC political analyst Robert Costa. So, Bob, in your latest, latest Washington Post piece, you write about how Hillary Clinton and Paul Ryan, how that relationship could shape Washington. And you write, in part, quote this, it was October 1998, and Hillary Clinton's midterm campaign swing for Democratic candidates brought the First Lady on a Saturday afternoon to a middle school gymnasium in Janesville, Wisconsin. A 28-year-old conservative upstart from the town was running for Congress, and Clinton was trying to stop him. Clinton's efforts failed, of course. Paul D. Ryan went on to win. Clinton and Ryan did not know each other then, and they barely have a personal rapport now. Nonetheless, their relationship could become Washington most important in determining whether the federal government functions over the next four years should Clinton win the presidency and Ryan retain his majority, as polls show is probably Probable, although not certain for both. And what did you make? What did you find about the answer to that question? Well, Mika, the relationship is the talk of Washington, especially as Donald Trump struggles in the polls. Uh, there's a sense on Capitol Hill that this relationship could be the key to whether Washington works next year. Could something actually be done in this highly partisan atmosphere, charged atmosphere we've seen over the past few years? They don't have much of a personal rapport, Clinton and Ryan, uh, but there, there are some connections. Uh, you do have uh, Clinton. She graduated from Wellesley. So did Ryan's wife, Jana. They share a book agent and Bob Barnett, uh, and they've met a few times in the past, uh, but mm -hmm. the, both sides right now are navigating, where would this go? You know, knowing them both or having met them, mm -hmm. both of them, and this is like a great opportunity to say, <laughs> because we've been so hard on Paul Ryan, but I totally think they would work well together, just knowing their personalities. I. Well, I think you know, it would be very effective. I actually, you know, and I always, I always said to people w when they asked what was Hillary Clinton like first time I met her, because we had, of course, when I ran in 94, I ran against Hillary Clinton, right. ran against uh, Hillary Care and all this other stuff. I said, the first time I met her, I said, she's actually, she, she's a Midwest Methodist. I know that's hard to believe with everything that's been written about her and yeah. said about her, but when I meet her, and I'm just saying personally, and I've mm -hmm. said this all the time, there is, I don't know, I just connect with her. It's sort of a no-nonsense. Uh, no, I'm sure she's really hard to work for, and I'm sure she's this, and I'm sure she's that. I'm just telling you the dozen times I've met her throughout the year, the years, uh, extremely comfortable in, in setting. There's sort of a just solid realness, no-nonsense, no BS sort of take on her that it drove me so crazy about her husband that it, it was sort of always sort of, uh, uh, she's just and and she, there's just I don't know and the same thing with Paul Ryan I, I've known Paul since he was 23 these two if they work together should be able to work together pretty well I mean time and time again Clinton in the governing context has earned plaudits from Republicans for being knowledgeable and substantive and hardworking um, I think she also kind of cares about the blocking and tackling of lawmaking and policy and and touching members of Congress and working with them in a way that I think we saw in the last few years uh, the current president just kind of lost his taste for what he didn't have in the first place. Well, we haven't had in 20 years. We didn't have it with George W. Bush. We didn't have it with Barack Obama. Again, the blocking and the tackling. That's part that of People like Bill Clinton understood, Richard Nixon understood, LBJ understood. It's kind of important if you can run Washington to understand yeah, that. Fun. Sure, absolutely. You know, I mean, I think that it's, it's something that Donald Trump, of course, it's totally foreign to him. It's something he's never done before. But I mean, I think the point that is interesting to raise here is that Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton are very, very different politicians, right? I mean, very different personally, but they're also very different politicians, and the reactions they get from folks is very different as well. And to some extent, it's interesting that over the course of these past 20, 30 years, that Hillary Clinton has become defined by her husband's type of politics, which I don't think is how most people well, have experienced and, her. Well, uh, Bob Costa, I think also the lens through which she was able to watch what happened in Washington and engage to an extent as First Lady because of her own personal interests in so many issues has given her a great sense of what works and what doesn't work.
I think that's exactly right, Mika. When you talk to friends of Secretary Clinton, they point to her experience in the early 90s working on health care, lessons learned from that experience, her time in the Senate, where she really built relationships with Republicans across the aisle. There's also some possible overlap here that could be important on policy. Uh, infrastructure it has been a priority for Speaker Ryan. He's talked to some Democrats behind the scenes about how that could maybe look next year. Clinton has made infrastructure a priority about repairing some of the highways and bridges mm -hmm. around the country. That could be an area of compromise. So could poverty. Ryan's brought poverty yep. to the fore for the GOP. Clinton also wants to target poverty. Yeah, and again, uh, Willie, you know, we always learn a lot more by our failures and our successes. Hillary Clinton's failure in 1993 on health care reform obviously taught her what the art of the possible was. She had, mm -hmm. again, as she saw it firsthand as a first lady That's in experience. Arkansas as well, uh, get burned a couple of times. Um, and it's one of the things I was saying in 2008. I could not believe that the Democratic Party put Barack Obama in the White House instead of Hillary Clinton, someone who had been there, done that, and was ready to govern on day one. Yeah, and somebody who knows, frankly, how the machinations of the relationship between the White House and Congress work and, know, and knows how to navigate that. I think, you know, it's funny, we've heard from the Obama administration over the last eight years that we in the media overreact to the lack of relationship that, oh, if he just had them over for coffee, everything would have been fine. Those relationships That's matter. Important. They just yeah. ma They just do. And, and if you have a president who's willing to step out and invite those people in and have those conversations. By the way, it's happening every day. I was talking to Cory Booker, mm -hmm. senator from New Jersey, a couple of days ago. And he talked just an example of going and meeting Roger Wicker, the Republican mm -hmm. from Mississippi. Yeah. Couldn't be more different. Belief systems couldn't be more different. But they wanted to get something done on railroad infrastructure, right. things like that. So they built a relationship <clears throat> mm -hmm. and they became friendly with each other. Two people who never would have known each other and they got legislation passed. It can be done. It's one of the great failings of the Obama administration. Not, not understanding, Bob Costa, just how important those relationships are. I saw it time and time again that building a personal relationship with somebody on the other side of the aisle is absolutely necessary to get legislation moved. And, and there's an acknowledgement on both sides that those personal relationships matter, but just a cup of cold water here. Throughout the course of my reporting on this, people kept bringing up two things. For Ryan, he could be burdened by the Freedom Caucus. Dozens of members who don't want to see any kind of agreement should Secretary Clinton win the White House. And for Secretary Clinton, she will have her own pressures as well. Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren in the Senate, not wanting any kind of deal being made on entitlement reform. Those are the kind of barriers that could maybe stop any kind of agreement from happening, even if the relationships are actually better than they've been in the past. Yep. Robert Costa, thank you. Philip Bum, thank you as well. Great reporting from the Washington Post. Still ahead this morning. I personally, I, Willie and I voted you for the Nobel Prize. I, appreciate, for, I do appreciate that. For writing. So yeah. runner up, first Bob runner up. Dylan got it instead. Yeah. Biochemistry, too. <laughs> if this was the Time Magazine's cover before last month in politics, we can only imagine what's on top for this week's edition. We're going to reveal the new cover ahead on Morning Joe. We're coming right back.